time I've last been on one of these to now is probably the Uber thing, isn't it? <clears throat> trying to sign up. Oh, that was a drama. Yeah, that was good. That was a good drama. But it's going to get but worse. Have you I signed up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> God. Have you? <laughs> Can you imagine that list? <laughs> yeah, my face. Thank you for supporting our channel. Thank you for supporting Wizan. Please like, subscribe, comment, and hit the notification bell for any future videos. So there's a law that basically, if you are not a person of good character, and the thing for me about that particular one is. It's very abstract in itself. Whose definition and where would be the line that you would cross that would be a person of not good character? So we had something up the other day, didn't we, Dave, with Trevor? Yeah. He told a story of the guy that was being deemed as no good character because he reversed, and I'm get corrected if I'm wrong, but he reversed out of a street on Fleet Street, I think. Um, and in my imagination, it was um, Dorset Rise, Salisbury Square, Salisbury Court. He was reversing out of there onto Fleet Street and clipped um, a parked motorbike. Now, did he knock it over, though? He knocked it over, yeah. Knocked it over. Knocks over yeah. So he's got out of the cab, picked it back up, left his details that he's hit the motorbike, um, genuine details, and then drove off. And now he's losing his license. No joke. Losing his license on not being a fit, proper character, good character. Not suspended. Losing it for good. Yeah. For good forever. I said then, irrevocable. So, uh, and who decides that? Exactly. And, and who, you, who's that's, got that's the same thing as you say? The definition, isn't it? Where, where, where did what, the line what, get crossed? What's the definition of good character then? Where, where's the rules of engagement on that? So, if he would have driven off, left the bike there, he yeah. would still have his license. No one know who he was. He would still have his license. Yep. So that's encouraging people listening to this to go. Well, that I ain't gonna leave my details. Yeah, he's strung up by the. A supposed law of cab driving. I wonder how many points does it carry if he was f uh, leave, uh, leaving the scene of an accident? It's got to be got to be a ban in it. Leaving the scene of an accident. I don't know. It'd be interesting to know because it, is it more? Is it is it worse to leave the scene then? Don't leave your details. I, I thought it was quite bad. Yeah, but here's the other thing about leaving the scene. So I've got to tell a story here of something I did when we was at City Airport. I reversed my bike in to park it between two cars, and I clipped the number plate of the car. And the person whose kite was was sitting in the calf, looking out the calf window. The wife was, and he was a um, a really big guy. She he ain't seen it, and she's seen it, um, but she couldn't have seen it clearly. She's presumed by my reactions that I've clipped something. They've come storming out. You've hit the car. I said no, I didn't. And he said, uh, Yeah, you did. She saw you. I said she didn't because I didn't hear it. And I know she couldn't see the detail of me hitting it. And that was it. I was adamant. I didn't hear it. I had touched it, but where he's, he's now pointing out a mark on his car that wasn't the mark because I clipped the number plate. There was no mark. And they were being nasty and, and presuming that some damage is done. But that was it. I just basically stood my ground. I didn't hear nothing. I parked my bike up. I walked into the school and said, see ya, bye. And do what you want to do. Claim your insurance. Or what, tell him I did it, but I didn't touch it. And I think my point is that that guy in Fleet Street, had he driven away and even a witness has said he'd done it, you could just say I didn't. Uh, that fell over in the wind and I got out and picked it up as a nice guy. I don't know. Yeah, I never actually touched it. No. I went close, but never touched so it. So he's been penalised by losing his licence, being honest. Yeah, penalised for being yeah. honest. That's Apparently, he's only, he's only been his bad at 18 months. Yeah. And he was longer on the knowledge than he's been a cab driver. He's been honest, which was the argument which Karen was saying. Was he? He's obviously of good character because he left his number and name. That, yeah. that's, that's good character itself, isn't it? I think this has got to be the worst one I've heard. Oh, it was, it was amazing. Start. Yeah. Trevor was under the impression that he was not going to be lucky and be able to save the day, that they are going to, because they've got their legal department on it, I imagine. <clears throat> but it was under the impression that it weren't going to work, that he was going to get done. What he's getting done for is not the being honest part. He's getting done for some kind of reckless driving, undue care and attention, uh, for hitting the bike. Yeah. Well, driving without due care and attention, yeah, it was. That's what it is. But you, haven't you got some, Paul? Haven't you got some drivers that have lost their license? Yeah. So what's, what's their stories? Do you know any of them? <sighs> There's a couple, but the one in particular that's been recent, he's recently getting his badge back, was that he had some points for speeding, I think six or maybe seven, and then he was on a normal cab shift and it was dark, and he was going across a mini roundabout <clears throat> and there was a cyclist approaching the roundabout and 
he should have given way to the cyclist, but he kept going. He didn't see the cyclist. I don't think he had much reflective clothing on or lights, but he did have a head cam with a camera on it. <laughs> and he's gone across the roundabout and he didn't give way and it's been filmed. He didn't have a collision with a cyclist, but a cyclist filmed it, sent it to the police and he got five points for that, which totted him over his limit of 12. He got a six-month ban from the DVLA, but he got an 18-month, what was it, 12? 18-month ban from TFL. Wow. And he's still trying to get his licence back because there's been delays after delays, um, but it, he's, you know, he didn't have any other trade. It's terrifying. It's yeah. the thing of TFL making no collision above the law. Yeah, wasn't the wasn't um, the, t- the one the common one what we're hearing recently with the f- telephone? Yeah, we've had a few drivers losing from from telephone, um, which we all know we can't do. Yeah, and this is it. getting so common now that people are getting caught. There's no excuse. But that one I thought was a bit strong because he he could have fought it. We talked we talked about it yesterday. He could have fought back a bit. He could have got a bit better defence where they could have said he wasn't wearing enough reflective clothing. There was no way he could see him. I've seen the video. It's so... Is it night time or daytime? Night time. And it's so innocuous. Like, you wouldn't... So like you could argue... Any of, us, any of us drivers could have done what he'd done. Yeah. Yeah. Did he have lights and everything else? What did he have on that? But it, it, you couldn't see. Because all you could see was his head cam pointing at our car. Yeah, that's, that's cab. All you could see was his... Like, you know when they're moving them around and they're coming up and they're describing it as they're going up and all that. He's done all that. And he's got... He's... he's Obviously, the, pl- the police mistake. are being told, aren't they? The They're being told to do tiny this. mistake, and he's lost his badge for 18 months. <laughs> Strong, isn't it? And what happens when they get the, the badge back and all that? They're not, not, there's no, like, a, suspend, like a suspended sentence or anything like that if they do anything else. Is there anything else? Well, he was allowed to apply for it before his ban ended, and they said, you want, as, as long as there's no other driving offences until the time that your ban ends, you can apply for your licence back. Um, but he didn't have to do a mini knowledge or anything like that. Mm. He, had, he got his, oh. He's getting his licence back. Um, so if, it, if something happens to say who's got an HGV and they, they lose it for 18 months, say it's a year more than the, their licence, they get their licence back, they can get their HGV, drive a 44-tonne Arctic, but can't drive a little cab. Yeah. Doesn't well, make any sense. It does mm. in a way. In my opinion, because oh, oh. you're driving a heavy goods vehicle, which is yeah. dangerous if you're oh. not driving it properly, but you've served your ban. Whereas the way that TFL look at it is you're carrying the general public, aren't you? But yeah, but you could, yeah, you but could run over the general public. HGVs yes. are the biggest killer of cyclists in this country. Yes. Yeah, I know. By far, they beat black cabs. Yeah, of mm-hmm. course. But, but uh, you're, tr- you're not carrying passengers, other people. That's the way they, that's the way they see it. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. Yeah, but Paul, now the you've hit, you've hit the, the comparison then with buses. Yeah, buses, buses kill more people than black cabs well. as well. Now, that's wrong. Yeah, well, what we should do... If the if bus it, should have the same as the mm-hmm. taxi, in my opinion. What it should do is, if, 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 do if it happens to anyone, they, they should immediately, they get their licence back, go for a bus job. <laughs> and then get their picture taken and driving a, uh, You're driving a, a TFL double decker bus. <laughs> Spot on. Shouldn't they? Yeah. They should Best all do idea that. I've heard. They should all do that, all get their picture done, all take it there. So I can't drive the little cab, but I can drive this great big red thing. Yes. Yeah. With uh, 80, what is it, people? So, yeah. 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 It just shows you how, how madcap this, is all, this all is. Yep. That you can drive a, a bus with school children on. Yep. Which is major general public. My kids, your kids, your kids. Well, like you can't take Giles from Euston Station, but you could yeah. also drive one of those minibuses you know? that, that do the, the hospital runs. Yeah, uh, and the most yeah. vulnerable in our society, you can drive all of those. Yeah, yeah, all going for their operations of poor souls and everything. Yeah, yeah. But you, but you can't drive. No, no, that's right. Rupert going to the yeah. To Why the are we bank? using Rupert and Giles? Eh? Why are we going middle class? Is it after the sandwich we just had? <laughs> But yeah, yeah, you can't you can't go to sexy fish. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it doesn't make any well, sense. Well, what about the other thing of it then? That the the guy who's on the bicycle is being used as a judge, jury, detective, and policeman on the one sole evidence of his video camera, and you're being prosecuted with no case. Yeah, if you committed like a more serious crime, that wouldn't be enough evidence. But but my man said he did it. That's the problem. <laughs> he said, I did it. I was there. Dave, we spoke about it yesterday, didn't we? My dad brought me up. No matter how red did you call, you That's didn't do it. Him. That's what I said <laughs> You know, there could have been a better defence. But then again, there could have been a different... 
well, set in a of sense, prosecution. He's good character. Yeah. <laughs> A better defence than I did it. <laughs> I hope he's not watching. <laughs> uh, my uh, my defence, Your Honour, yeah. is yeah. I did it. I was there. <laughs> I was there. I was there. You can't really say you didn't do it because your registration's been recorded. You well, know, you could, you could, you could negate the fact that there was no no problem occurred. Uh, whatever yeah. he's talking about, I don't think he was in any danger whatsoever. None. Uh, Tom Hartley had the similar thing with the too close to being the cyclist. Oh. Well, M- meet your half in it yes yeah, so the cyclist yeah. is now reported him for that nothing came of it I think that's what Tom was saying he got done for uh, but it, nothing came of it in the end but now the cyclist can say that you're you wasn't within the due distance yes well what you've got to definitely say every single time is I didn't do it and what did you use as your measuring gauge yes to, to gauge that and I yes. want you want more proof don't you yes the video footage for the speed cameras, they've got the dashed lines to tell exactly what the speed was. You'd have to have some sort of more evidence than that. I've had a couple of drivers where we've got the the uh, the, the letter about the distancing, and that's it's only been since they changed the highway code, where obviously cyclists have got busy with the new law, yeah, and so seen that they might they might be out with nick something out of it, and then they've gone. But again, we've had nothing back. I've two of the drivers that have had it. Neither of them, it was no further action. Why is there no law then such as cyclists can't drive on a pavement, but they should also not be allowed to drive in the road when there's a cycle lane? So you either drive in the cycle lane, but if you're driving in the road when there's a cycle lane, that would be an offence. Yeah, I know. Can I tell you why that wouldn't work? Why wouldn't that work? Because we don't have to drive in a bus lane. Even though there's a bus lane that allows taxis, we can still use the other lane. So they would say the same thing about us, wouldn't they? No, no. When there's a bus lane, you've got to get in that bus lane. You don't have to get in it. No, so cyclists don't have to get in the cycle lane. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Dave, take your lyca off and yeah. crack on. They need to get well, no, you got, you got, you got to be a bit of devil's advocate yeah, about you that. Do. You got, it's you a know. good shout. It's no, a no, good no, shout. no, that wasn't. A, that, you're very good usually, but I'm not going to have that one. That no. one, no, that's not good enough. It can't no. go in room 101. No, yeah, that's not going in. No, they've got a cycle lane. If there's a cycle lane designated for cycles, they should be in that lane. Obviously, they can't drive on the pavement. So you're saying because they can drive on the pavement, they should be able to choose no, the pavement? Dri- no, not the pavement. Can't drive yeah. on the pavement. No one should be on the pavement. Come on. Um, I heard, and I don't know if it's still the case, is that the Metropolitan Police will no longer look to prosecute cyclists on the pavement. So they could, they, they can't technically, but they do, and they won't get prosecuted for it. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know what? I, when I was an HGV driver, I went on a course. We, we, you had to go on this cycle one, and you can imagine what it was like for the truck drivers with big bellies all going along. And um, <laughs> Not you, Dave, not you. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was uh, it was them that trying to show truck drivers what it was like to be a vulnerable. And I, I simply said, look, I know, I cross the road all the time. I know what it's like yeah. to be a vulnerable road user. Mm-hmm. You know, and trying to show us, and, uh, and most <coughs> HGV drivers are very safe. Like, most cyclists are very good. But yeah. they, it just is, the odd time things happen, didn't they? Yeah, woman, she pulls up the, at the set of lights, right in your little blind spot down on the left-hand side, takes no notice of your indicator for turning left, sits right on the wheel arch, and then you turn left and she's underneath it and wonders why she got killed. There are sensors going along there. They should go off when someone's near it. But That's they, new, though. They, they have recent yeah, steps. Yeah, we have, we have 20 years? 10, yeah, 10 to 15 years. But... They go off. If they're not set right, if they get dirty or they get a move, mm-hmm. they will pick up street furniture or they will pick up people walking along the pavement. Yeah. So in the end, the alarms are going off all the time. It's like cry wolf. You're driving a truck and it's going off all the time. You're thinking, what? and it's just like you don't want to look anymore because mm-hmm. it's constantly going off. No side camera. Yeah, and you put the indicator on, you've got side camera, you've got cameras all around it. You've even got a camera on the driver as well. Your driver's being watched all the time. Yeah. And if, uh, if, he, if that driver does anything, they're fired straight away. Mm. You literally... They will, a judge would normally side with a cyclist or a pedestrian. Yeah, there's a tier, there's depend, a tier, isn't it? Yeah, they, they will lo- always look to to compensate. It doesn't matter who's at fault. Yeah, they'll always. A give cyclist, them it's a pedestrian. The cyclist is wrong. Car, yeah. it's a cyclist. The car is wrong. Yeah. Um, and then when they was doing their show, they showed some clips and that to us, and uh, it was the Holloway Road they showed us. And uh, you know, you, they've got the cars parked in the bus lane in the in the bays. Yeah. They're in the bays where they should be, and then the cyclist is going up in front of you. And the, the question was, where would you like the cyclist to be? And what they want you to say is, away from the car doors, yeah, you know, out. Like, you're all okay, case put your hand up, let, let, make sure I've seen you, like where you're saying on the blind spot, wave out yeah. to the driver. Let's see. And then they say, they say, where would you like the, the cyclist to be? And I said, indoors. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I'm going to change that question. I'm going to ask that. Excellent. <laughs> At home where it's safe, not out on the road. Well, that's a funny story as well that I, I can relate to because I actually had to do a speed awareness course recently and I did it online. 
So you you you're all on Zoom or whatever it's called, Google Google Meets or whatever. Yeah. And um, they show you this video of a driver in a normal car um, doing certain speeds and um, stopping. And at the speed limit, he stops before he hits the wall. But if he's three mile an hour over the speed limit, he goes another certain amount of metres and crashes into the wall. And he <laughs> he warned us all before the start of the video that he was going to ask us questions randomly. And he picked me first. So I thought, well, all right. What have you learned from that video, Paul? I went, well, that um, not that suddenly all cars have the same brakes. That suddenly <laughs> um, all cars have the same acceleration. That we commit, like all of a sudden everyone's brakes are the same. They've all got the same meat on the. Mm -hmm. He was like, well, that's not the point. I said, well, you asked me what I learned from it. Uh, all of a sudden, like everyone's got the same. Yeah, you're saying time. you're saying the equation can't be the same across it can't cars. Be. Uh, it's not a universal thing. It can't it? be. How do they? Yeah, that's not no. There's no education there. You know, um, I don't remember what it was, but it was like for seventy mile an hour, you needed seventy feet or whatever it was. Or was it? There was some feet really footage to every mile an hour, wasn't it? But he said it's, well, it's right. to do with the, what it's to do yeah, with based on based on cars from the sixties yeah. and fifties. Imagine 50s. what imagine what a brand new Ferrari oh. or Porsche would stop at yeah. now, stop yeah. the sixpence, wouldn't yeah. it? And I said, does it allow for regenerative braking? He said, what's that? And I went, oh, <laughs> you don't know? He mm -hmm. was like, no. I said, electric cars. He was like, oh right, yeah, I, I've never been asked that before. Mm. Um, so you know they're educating us, I suppose, but I don't, I don't know. It was just a bit strange, and I think you I think went on one seven years ago, and it was exactly, it looked like exactly the same video they were showing us. Yeah. So, so cars have not been upgraded in seven years. So seven years ago, so you never learned anything from the first one. <laughs> <laughs> you're but, still, but you're still speeded. Yeah. But funny enough, I was the quickest one there. But what I was going to say <laughs> was, well, you maybe you should get the embrace change. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, Tesla, isn't it? It's but, Tesla. But um, twenty miles per hour speed limit. I believe most of the people on the course were done at on the 20 mile an hour speed. Limit. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it's really difficult 20, I think it's, it's difficult because it's a complete change. It's a complete change for everyone. Yeah. And that's why I say it's difficult. If we had always drove at 20, if you learn and we drove from a hundred years at 20, then it would be easy, mm. but it's not. Everyone's right. been driving 30 that wasn't policed. So they, everyone was doing 35 or 38 and now we've basically halved it. But yeah. what they teach you, they teach you, um, the, the sp different speed limits and different roads. Like, you know, when you get a street light, you know that that's a 30, right? You you know that when you don't see anything on the road, it's a national speed limit. But but in London, it's split up too much. You'll be going down one road, and yep. you'll go from 20 to 30 to 40, and then back down to 20 again. And you can't concentrate on everything and then, s then be behave in a certain way. And I can understand why drivers are losing their licences for mm. speeding now. You know, it happens to all of us. It's, it's so difficult. Drive a bus. Yeah, yeah. get away with all of it. I, I, I don't know if I, I might be too old, but I, yeah. if it happens, I think I definitely would. I definitely would out of spite go and try and get a job <laughs> as a bus driver. Well, yeah. no, now you open up the other thing then. So can I go and drive PHV? Same law, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah they're, they're under the same, oh, dare I say it. So they can lose their licence as easy as we can? No. No, the buses can't, no. No, the PHV drivers? Yeah. Why? Why would they lose it? Yeah, the same that, the, as us? These, these these draconian laws that they've brought in at TfL, yeah. just, they apply to PHV as well. I believe. No, I don't. They do. Well, you you can get, you can get a job with six points. Job what? Uh, driving a bus, London bus. We're talking about private no, hire vehicle. Private private hire vehicle. vehicle. You're talking keep about up, Dave. public well, service vehicle, public service, PSV. Yeah. yeah. No part. No. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, yeah. You're right. You I can. think you can get six points, can't you? And go and get a job yeah. as a bus driver. I believe you can, depending on which bus company it is, because there's quite a few of them now. It's not just one company, is it? Yeah, right. They're it's all different companies. They've got to so. be looking for bus drivers all the time. You always see them all the time. Yeah, yeah, it's on the back yeah, of the bus. Yeah. 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 Do you want to drive this bus? Well, yeah, if I lose my cab licence, of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> I would have loved to have that picture, but not that that, that would mean you've lost your licence. So no, I wouldn't like I want to see someone do this now. So if anyone's watching and they're in danger of losing their licence or they've lost their taxi licence, I want you to apply for a bus licence. You don't necessarily have to do the job, but I want the, we need this to happen. Dave, you've got you've got a Good point there, I believe. We're going to start a campaign. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We're going to have black buses. Black buses, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no ads. We just want them in uniform. This this one here, number 55. Yeah. And it's excess passengers. And I have to say, when we, when oh, we had a little read one. up, do you know what? Ever, ever, you look at this. With the kids and the babies. You 55. can, yeah. You get seven or eight people in the cab, can't you? Yeah. See, now, so, how, many, how many people know that you can, you can they don't count? Right, yeah. You know, well, two two kids under ten count as one adult. 
An infant in arms does Doesn't not count, count as a all. person. Yeah. And two uh, two children under 10 count as one. Yeah. So what's technically then? This is so the what's trivial the most pursuit. You're going to have yeah. to have one adult because you you've not got all children, are you? Or say you've got all children. You could take all children. All children. So that would be, so if there's you five, could, you could take 10. You could take 10 and, and, they, could, <laughs> and they could all have an infant in, in the arms? <laughs> you could take 20. <laughs> so there's the trivial pursuits. At what's the maximum amount of people you can take in a five-seater cab, not a six-seater, because a six-seater is going to change it. The TXs yeah. are all six-seaters, aren't they? Yeah. So a six-seater cab could take... 12 kids carrying babies, which is 18, uh, it's 24 no, <laughs> living creatures. 18, isn't it? Isn't it? No, being, I it, think you're just being silly no, now. 12, no, you're right, 24, isn't it? 24. Since you've had that ginger cabbie on, no, it's, technically, it's just chaos now. We, we, yeah, <laughs> technically, we're right. 24. 24 living beings can be taken maximum in the back of a six-seater cab uh, because two children, every one of them under 10, would make 12, and every one of them can carry a baby that doesn't count. We need to try it and test the law. Do a law case. Test it the does case. go on here though, so look, there's a note. <coughs> if seat belts are fitted, the number of passengers must not exceed the number of seat belts. We, the, the, the infant in arms is not going to count this as a seat belt. This is so old. No, but even children don't need to have the seat belt. It goes in on. In view of safety, the Department of Transport recommends that a passenger should not be allowed to carry an infant in, in arms on their lap whilst in a taxi. That's only it's recommended. It's not law. It's not yeah. law. It's recommended. They can I recommend what you like. What. Can recommend. They couldn't recommend a barber. <laughs> what does that mean? Recommend <laughs> every every kid should have their hair cut before. Yeah. They. Babies and children under three must travel in the child restraint where provided or where available in a taxi. So I, not provide. So that's all like nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a load of hot air. I highly recommend that you just stick to whatever seat belts you've got. In seri- I'm, I'm serious because we've just had a case recently where a driver's picked up a passenger at Euston and the, um, the, the uh, I don't know what it is, the people with the blue vests on that help vulnerable people yeah. brought this lady over to my driver and put her in the cab. An orderly, isn't it? I don't know. Or, or porter. Put her in the cab and he's, he's it's a short job. He's gone under the underpass, Euston underpass, come up, and a cab had come out under the underpass and took a f- hail, and he was behind that cab, and he had to slam his brakes on. She's come off the seat and broke her arm, apparently. Mm. He Obviously, he must have put his brakes on hard. I've seen the video. It wasn't that bad. Um, <clears throat> so he's pulled over. She's got out. He's made sure she's okay. He's offered to take her to hospital. She said no. She wanted to go to the party she was supposed to go to. So he didn't think nothing of it. He gave her his number. She didn't take the registration. And then she's rung him and she said she'd broken her arm. She had to go to the hospital. And who does she make a claim off of? I've looked into it. And the law says anyone over the age of 14 is responsible for putting their own seatbelt on. But she's saying she was partially blind. Which means that she can't put her seatbelt on? I don't know. But anyway... She didn't put a seatbelt on. He's braked, boom, and that's and now we're, there's a claim on my insurance, right? Yeah. So did you get the claim? Not yet. And there's no. not been a claim yet, but she's going to make a claim. I don't think she will win, do you? Well, I've spoke to my insurance company, and they've said she will, and she'll win oh. something. But it will there'll be a redu- reduction because she didn't follow the law. She's got to have some responsibility for herself. But she's saying, because she's well, partially blind, you needed to make sure that you knew she was heart, so disabled in some way. There was no guide dog. There was no white stick. There was no... She didn't tell him yeah. she was partially blind before. No. But she had no eyes, didn't she? <laughs> <laughs> so what are you saying? You're saying that people, you've got to insist they put them on or do you just verbally say, I recommend you wear a seatbelt? I would is say... That, what would kill that I can, claim? I can see in the back if someone's got their seatbelt on or not. I and mean, I personally always say... Would you mind putting your seatbelt on? Some people get offended by that block, by the way. They think you're telling them what to do and mm-hmm. they don't like to be told what to do. And some people even say, I didn't think I had to in the taxi. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah, but you don't. I don't even know the law. So The law is over 14s yeah. are, are responsible for putting their Are responsible, on. but are not legally obliged to. That's uh, uh, the that's difference. Not, no. So they are obliged to? Yes. They must. So if a policeman stopped you and you're in the back of a taxi, you don't have a seatbelt on, you've broken the seatbelt law. Correct. And I've Googled it. That's me googling it, right? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not into the law as much no. as a lot of people, but I went into it quite heavily because I, I thought I might be, it might be costing me, and lo and behold, it is. I didn't think after I'd read that, I didn't think they had a leg to stand on. But my insurance company are telling me that if there's a claim, it's a valid claim, and it will get dealt with as a valid claim. So I'm saying that you should not take any more people than there is seatbelts, and you make sure that they've got seatbelts on. 
or you don't have to make sure they've got seatbelts on. You need to make sure that you've done due diligence yeah, to say, told listen, it's your responsibility to put your seatbelts on. I'm warning you before we set off. Yeah, which, I know. Which is a bit of a speech. But, it, well, you can, or you can just tell them. But the thing is, when you're busy on a shift, you're telling everyone to put their seatbelt on. It's, mm. it's a nonsense. What about a sign-up? What yeah, about the a sign-up? Sign sign She's partially up. blind. She, so, could, she couldn't one, see One it. in brow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, there's got to be a way, isn't there? There's well, this is be, the thing, and there is a sign a up. Way of it's part there is of a way. You're in, it's part of compliance. You've got to have the seatbelt sign up in front. So when you get in, you see that. Please put your seatbelt on. It's, it's, it's there in front. No, of you, right? even better is an automatic in and out uh, voice recording. Seatbelts yeah. must be worn. Seatbelts must be worn. Bang. When you open the door, you know, like like you do in your own car. So you know, when the alarm goes off. Yeah. Well, then yeah. That, that would be annoying because then they've got. To, but if it literally you just turn your intercom off, they can annoy them, can't it? Mm. But you could you do, say, yeah. there could be a button on your dash that all you need to do as you set off, it could be even linked to the meter if you get right into the technology of it. You set the meter and start the meter and the meter triggers the voice recording of saying seatbelts must be worn. Whether they do then yeah. is up to them. But you now you've covered the woman who's blind, can't see it. Now you've got to cover the geezer who's deaf, haven't you? <laughs> you've got to have the <laughs> Yeah, you've got to have both. Yeah, if he's deaf. Yeah, yeah, that's another thing, isn't it? <laughs> um, look, it's, that's what I'm saying. I think that, you know, you just got to make your own decision, haven't you? you yeah. Can, you can follow silly laws like that, or you can make your own decision and be logical and think, actually, if you ain't got a seatbelt, you shouldn't be sitting in a cab. Mm. I still want to get 24 people in a cab. Yeah. yeah. You want them all paying a tenner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's by the head, not yeah. by the meter. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. That's, that, that was um, a bit of a tirade, but that was yeah, good. It was. Um, so technically, right, if we don't go sort of bananas, what do you think we would get away with just on the fly? Because 24 legally seems to be slightly covered, but the seatbelt rules it out. You're going to have four children under 10, two adults and a baby would be in the realms of about the maximum. Yeah. I see yeah. it so much on social media, people asking how many they can take. It's, it's it's mad. Like some people will take more than others. It's a bit of a But you can <sighs> but you can take more than ambiguous. Six. The if you've got six seats, six belts. You could take more, couldn't you? You yeah. could. Yeah. yeah. If you want to yeah. carry babies, but you've got to look at what I said and think be logical, you know, like if there's someone because you, when you're getting in a taxi, you don't know how good that driver is. You don't know how much he's going to be on his... But I've been in some terrible cabs. Mm. You know, to be honest, most of them weren't in London, but I've been in some terrible taxis where there's hammering on their brakes. I've been in ca back of cabs that don't know how to use their regen at all and they're just like all over the place. Um, so you don't know who you're getting in with. So you've got to be... Make sure you... Oh, mm. The first thing I do is go for my seatbelt as soon as I get in a taxi. First thing I do. Yeah, a lot I, of people don't. No, never. You know, you don't? You don't? No. See, why? No, because I don't. But what about don't. when you're driving the cab? Do you do you wear? Oh, if it's legal, if I have to, yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but that is another. So, have, are we going to cover that one? What one? Is that one in here? Where the driver? The driver. The driver one is. Isn't the driver one? Paul, what is it? The driver one is. It's where if you're working, if you've got, you, you've got your light on, is that in here? You don't have to wear the seatbelt. If you're working via an app, you don't have to wear your seatbelt. I just thought but we don't you, have to wear a seatbelt. No, no, no. If, if you're, you're, you're driving home, if you for privacy, your shift, yeah, or if you're taking your, your wife out somewhere, you've got to have it. You've got to put a seatbelt. <coughs> yeah, the problem is it can't be policed. That can it? Is it? And in it, it did, and it just recently happened to a guy who's somewhere on the upper or lower Thames Street or somewhere. He's heading home, and a couple pulled alongside. Where are you going? He's going home, and he needs to give him a fight. Uh, you know why? He said, "I did it." <laughs> <laughs> that was his defence. Same guy. <laughs> I did same, it. Same driver. <laughs> is that is that in here? Have you no, I didn't see that one. Don't see it. Right, so when I went on my badge day, the uh, examiner said, the law is you don't have to wear your seatbelt while you're on your shift. So what you're saying is that an element of truth, right? But will what he's saying in the law protect you in a collision? I know of a cab driver and he lost his life because he weren't wearing his seatbelt, you know? Wouldn't have been, it probably would have been a minor injury had he been wearing his seatbelt and for the windscreen. Uh, and the TX4 doesn't have an airbag, right? So you're driving around at whatever speed you're driving around with no seatbelt because you're a cab driver, you're going to be all right, yeah? That makes sense to me. Yeah, well, if Again, just use your logic. If I'm working days and the traffic's bad in the West End, I'm not having it on. Mm. Why? Because I ain't going fast enough. To, to, uh, it just ain't happening. Even, even Why do you need to be going fast? 
No, I mean fast enough. I didn't say fast. I said fast enough. If you're on the M25 or 70. What about if someone yeah. hits some, what about if one of your 42 ton lorries 44, hits you up the jacks? 44, 42. That's the back, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but he's, he's, that's serious force, man. Yeah, but you're going to, you, you'll go that way. You'll hit the partition if he hits you from behind. No, you'll go forward. You don't oh. understand the laws of physics, Paul. The well, yeah, that's why I, you define that's why I the laws of physics. That's why I questioned that guy on the speed of wearing a school because I didn't Paul, know any physics. Paul, with that said, you should wear your seatbelt. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know which way you're going to go. I've got a clue. No, I just the, the, think the, if he hits you from behind, the, you get whiplash, don't you? You go the back. The cab will go forward. Yeah. Oh, you, you'll go, back. you'll yeah, go backwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. But you'll go backwards quite hard, right? You, you might, might break your back. Move. Might yeah. move. Well, you sit in the seat. You won't move. You might. It's your head whiplash, isn't so it? What, what That's why they brought head belt? restraints. Yes. Head restraints yeah. weren't in cars in the sixties. Yeah, fair enough. I stand corrected. But what would a seatbelt do to protect you? Nothing. I mean, nothing. Give you a nasty, give you a nasty rash, I think. Mm. A nasty burn. All right. What about if your forty-four ton lorry hit you from the front? <laughs> You'd be dead. <laughs> You're going forward, yeah. right? You'd be dead. Yeah. yeah. I don't think the seatbelt's going to do a lot then. I think the forty-four ton goes straight over you. Yeah, maybe. I just think it's a safety device. It, if, I was, if I was going out near the motorway or up near 30, 40 mile an hour, then, then you put then, it on. Then, yeah, I'll click it on. So yeah. you're on and off with a seatbelt according to your driving conditions. Leave it, 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 it on. No, don't want to. <laughs> no. I could get it. I'm the same, yeah. yeah. You know, in the cab, I don't wear it at all. I think it's I, I'm afraid I'm even worse. I wouldn't even wear it when I went anywhere. You just as I get in and out. <clears throat> Do you think that's just a habit, Dean? Or? I think some... <laughs> I'm not one of these people that, you know, we should have the freedom to do what we want. Wearing seatbelts has saved thousands of lives, millions of lives. Yeah. Um, it's there for a reason. Yeah. It's not there just and to piss people off that don't that drive you know, cabs. But when you're in the cab, you are a, an exemption. You're driving around in London. I imagine that the impacts of the, the driving around in London, they're not seatbelt kind of things anymore. They're time, little prangs. Time of day. Time of day. You're in the rush hour. Yeah. You're, in, you're in the busy West End. Yeah, yeah you go. I don't, I don't think I'd ever go fast enough. I've just always worn my seatbelt, so then it, to me it doesn't feel like it's on. Yeah. So I suppose because you've always not worn it, you don't really want to wear it. When I took you, my you, you're from the day and age where you where it was optional, right? Yeah. yeah. My, when I took my driving <laughs> test, right. it wasn't law. That's how long ago I took my test. Me neither. What, what, uh, you, it was always been law for you? Yeah. When did it come in? No, I think 1983 or 84. That's right. So not like that, yeah, yeah. 83. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, in the 80s. It was oh, definitely in the 80s. I, I got my licence when I was 17, which is 82. 1968. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was never exempt. Get, these never get old. There's, there's another one that I thought was it was kind of apt for what we've been through the pandemic. And then. Number 64, if you want to look at 64. Yeah. And it's uh, you, you don't have to carry someone who's got the plague. No. <laughs> Yeah, it's on there. But it's not, it's not I, I mean, infectious I've, I've, diseases. Yes, you, yes, yes. It's notable. No, no, notifiable, isn't it? Uh, visi Phrase. Visible? Notifiable disease. Uh, that means oh. the list of the following. So in other words, they must, yeah, under the oh, sun. Oh, no, you've hit, you've, hit the Act. you've hit the technicalities of it, no doubt. A notifiable disease is going to be something that you need to notify the person yes. of. So the fact yes. that we can visibly see that they've got a cold doesn't mean we can refuse them. Yeah, Unless a cold is a notifiable disease. Yes. So, covid Right, talk about COVID. So I remember in the middle of the pandemic, I was driving somewhere and um, I got flagged and the guy said, can you put your mask on, please? And I said, no. And he went, I'm not getting in then. I was like, okay. I don't know whether, where that fits into this, but I was quite happy and comfortable with being partitioned. Didn't think that I wanted, I wanted to drive around with a mask on. I think you'd be in the clear. You're, Me, in, um, you're in your own private work I environment. I was in the space, yeah. If I, I suppose if I'd have been driving a car, was then you'd have every right Didn't to they bring it in during COVID that we, we had to, unless you was exempt? Yeah, that, that was the thing, wasn't it? Well, I, I didn't Did you agree have an exemption? It. No. Am I admitting an offence here? All, the, all my keyboard Whoa. warrior haters are going <laughs> to go forward and multiply no, and no. report me to TFL. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I, I wasn't one for masking up, to be honest. Uh, I wasn't into it no I didn't like it nah. I didn't like it at all nah. I, I think I always felt that people that were vulnerable yes. didn't feel comfortable should wear a mask yes. but me personally I wasn't going to walk around uh, with a mask on especially not in my own vehicle that no, I, I agree, own I'd agree with you on that did you, I do, own. did you do anything extra to the partition you know the gap yeah the I filled did gaps that, yeah, 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 yeah 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 I put Gap filler, not gap filler, but I put like them put rubber. In. Calc. Yeah. Pipe yeah. Yeah. decorated. Yeah, I got um, in the early days before ADVC brought their solution out, I got um, 
lagging, pipe lagging, you know, the foam one, and I filled the gaps in. So I was filled and gapped in and completely separate to the passenger. So I felt like I don't need to wear a mask. Thank you very much. So, oh. d- yeah, COVID would have been a notifiable disease, definitely. I would have expected. Mm. But Smallpox, it, do you cholera. think common cold would be... And also, so it's it's got to be... You're going to have a symptoms of a disease that you know you've got that are not showing. So... Have you got number 64 there? Because you can see all the... This, the there's every disease that's listed under the Act of 1984. Cholera, like smallpox, typhus... It's amazing how much we've moved on in 30... Is that 30 years or 40 years? 40 years ago that law was yeah. passed. 40 years ago. What, for the diseases? It's that 13 one? pH. What's the pH stand for? That ain't private, actually. What's that? Public higher? Public higher, man? Public higher, where are we? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's the 13 pH Act of 1984. Scarlet fever. 40 Yellow years. Fever. All them... Dis- I mean... <laughs> so, so, so that's what I'm saying about COVID is the, the modern version of that, I suppose. Well, what would it have been back then? Did we have a... The last epidemic Flu. pandemic was 100 years ago. Well, n- there's been a few <coughs> mi- minor ones, hasn't there? Like, I don't know. All right. Well, let's Swine see. flu. <coughs> Infected hepatitis. Flu. Malaria. Ebola. Measles. Yeah. Measles. Measles. Measles, yeah. Nah, that's one someone must have got. Oh, here's... Chicken look. pox. Yeah, look. Rabies. Yeah. Yeah, I've had that. <laughs> <laughs> rabid. He's rabid. <laughs> Uh, it's a couple of good ones there, aren't there? But I tell you what, a lot's happened since I've last been on one of these podcasts. What? Has it? So much in the cab trade has happened. Uh, it's all gone bananas, isn't it? It's gone mental. Yeah, we drop a list and do, do one about it then. Well, well I'm, I was just going to drop in a few now. Go on then, start. All right, go on. What was well, you, you were saying, saying something else, Paul, earlier? What was that? <laughs> Is that you introducing That's me to, to the chaos, <laughs> to the chaos of what's going on? You were talking about what's, the, what's the biggest drama that's yeah. that's happened in the time I've last been on one of these to now is probably the Uber thing, isn't it? <clears throat> trying to sign up. Oh, that was a drama. Yeah, that was good. That was a good drama. But it's going to get but worse. Have you right? signed up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? God. <laughs> Can you imagine that list? <laughs> yeah, my face. Oh my god, here he is again. <laughs> Slags of the trade. Yeah. Slags of the trade. Number yeah. one. Yeah. And he signed up. But what I was going to say was, um, I had to look on the app yesterday because I thought I'm in central London. I'm going to download it and I'm going to see if I can get a cab on it because we're into January now. Yeah. And didn't they say they were going to go live in January? Yeah. They, they had one driver. There was no option. They, yeah, yeah, there was no option to get a taxi. Yeah. It was just executive, whatever they are, X, da 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 da, and you can well, get food as well, right? There's a food option. So there was no option to get a cab. So I don't think they're. Is that advertising? It was advertising. Wasn't it was it? just some kind of yeah. PR stunt, weren't it? Yeah, because they, 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 again they've, they've seen like free now doing it, yeah. they? and they've just gone. You know, we 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 better chuck out that we're doing it. Yeah, mm. even though. We've only got one cab. <laughs> and and we shouldn't react either. That was the other thing. We shouldn't be reactionary. We should have just let them thingy. Within our industry, we kind of know, really, come on. Mm. I, we can do lots of things. I, and, but they literally tried to take down our industry. That single-handedly, no. What about, what about dogs? Dogs? Dogs, yeah. Dogs. Would you let any dog in your cab? Yes. I thought we were talking about the people that come in front of us and nick jobs. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were the dogs. Well, right? it does mention those at the end. But the um, so I believe that all dogs are um, should be allowed in cabs, and especially guard dogs. But I've seen dogs refused on ranks in front of me because of religion. Mm-hmm. Apparently you can refuse. Because I said to him, why are you refusing the job, sir? You he can't went, refuse it's my religion. Of religion. It's my religion. Um, and the and the funny thing about it, the dog was disabled. <laughs> ah, and the disabled dog. The dog was the disabled had two legs and he had wheels at the back. The dog had wheels, so he was in a little trolley, and I had to get the ramp out for the dog. So he not only refused the dog, he refused a disabled dog. So there, that is the ultimate refusal, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's the ultimate broom of a broom. I can't see what this is about religion. I mean, I'm, I'm the dog bit. It's not. It's to do with health. Oh, is it, yeah, what's health? What's religion got to do with health? Is yeah, you can refuse, your well-being? You, you can refuse a dog if you're allergic to him. No, he didn't say that. He didn't say nothing to do with that. He said religion. Can't can't take it. Religion. Carrying Lunch. guide dogs and other assistance okay. dogs, right? The driver of a taxi that has been hired has a duty to take 
to carry an assistance dog and allow it to remain with the passenger and not to make an additional charge for doing so. A, dra- a driver failing to comply with these requirements is committing an offence and is liable to a fine. It's a level three fine. Assistance dog is defined uh, under the Equality Act as a has been trained to be a guide for a blind person, has trained for to assist deaf people. What is the fine? Thousand. Thousand pound fine to refuse. Has been trained to prescribe to charity to assist disabled person. Consists of epilepsy or uh, other effects mobility. Da, da, da. It's of a prescribed category, which is da, da, da. It is, however, possible for a taxi driver to apply to TFL for a certificate of exemption. So they had to apply and have a t- certificate of exemption. From the requirement under the Equality Act on medical grounds. Well, there you go. And if a certificate is granted, it must be displayed in accordance with the regulation of two regulation two of the DDA regs two thousand. So you cannot refuse a dog based on religion. You can refuse it refuse it based on medical grounds, but you must be displaying the certificate to say to say that you are exempt. So there you go. Yeah, you should I'd, be taking I'd never any assistant dogs. Because I, I, I for all religions, to be honest with you, if you take it word for word, all religions are kind, don't they? They're kind. To, they're kind to people. Kind to animals. Kind. I to think animals. there's I mean, something about dogs being dirty. Funny you should say about the exemption because when I was talking about the masks, everyone made their own exemption. Do you remember that? Yeah. You, just, it, you, just, you could just make them up yourself. No, but you could so it just backs up what I'm saying. If I don't want to wear a mask, I'm not bloody wearing one. You could actually TFL. go on TFL's website and click on off. for... A, no, just pr- click off and they send you a proper badge out. Yeah, yeah. I had one. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, they TFL sent them out. Yeah, exempt. I had one too. Yeah. I, did. I wasn't yeah. exempt. I had the COVID. I wanted to give it to everyone. I yeah. <laughs> but yeah, th- it's interesting though That's now we've got it. One of those oh. in your pocket, and then you are exempt. Yeah. But going back to the dogs, yeah, going away from the subject yeah, of COVID, on the dog's basis, you now that guy would have been eligible for a £1,000 fine because there are certain circumstances. First, you must apply for an exemption. Yeah. Second, you must display the exemption certificate. And third, the reason must be medical. So if you have someone who's refusing dogs, if anybody who's blind is watching this now... <laughs> 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 anyway, so yeah, uh, you have to. Put your it's, quite, on. it's quite interesting. So, Put your on. Uh, <laughs> no uh, exemption for anything yeah. other than medical reasons, and you need to apply and obviously prove it. You've mm. got to prove what a medical condition yeah, is. Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to get them in the cab. I didn't really want to go into a discussion with him. I just no, got, like I said, it was the dog was disabled, so it was just the dog was madness. disabled. Jesus Christ! Yeah, you know. Mate, oh dear! He, I mean, so he refused the dog, but the dog was had two legs and two wheels and in a crate. And, you know... If you know now, though, would you police it? Where's your certificate? Where is your exemption certificate? And what is your exemption reason? I think I probably would say it to him, but I wouldn't go to, as far as reporting him. Yeah, you see, I'm a bit, a bit too minds. I think we need to start... But would that person report me? My last up but chuck, I don't think I would. My last up chuck in the cab was the dog. The dog, yeah? Yeah, and he was such a good dog. He did, did it perfect round circle. <laughs> He Did didn't he, go, he didn't go. He didn't go anywhere. He didn't go anywhere. It was just perfect little circle, oh. little staff. It, and I did ask. I so said, "Is the dog okay with like in vehicles?" I don't know. It's the first time in the black cab. No. <laughs> yeah. Did you manage to get the clean up fee off the dog? Yeah, oh, poor little sod. It was the other thing is, I wonder, wipe-up. can you take? So I'm, I've been told you can take a dog with you on a shift, so they can be in the. I've seen it. Yeah, I don't know if I've, it's allowed. No, I don't know if it's allowed. I don't think there's. Any, oh, there is something about what you can carry in the luggage compartment. Mm. But I don't think they thought about mentioning dogs. Great Dane. Well, yeah, who said out the window? I met a guy at the um, bagel shop in Brick Lane, and he had a dog, and he was a cab driver. Because I see his badge on, I said, "Oh, you take your dog to work." He went, "Yeah." Did you guess what his name is? I was like, "I don't know." Luggage. <laughs> she calls it yeah, dog luggage. Well, luggage, luggage is in the compartment. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. He calls yeah. it luggage. Yeah. Then what, it would, then it dogs would be called luggage. What did you have in the luggage compartment? I had luggage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, luggage. <laughs> <laughs> great if he's watching uh, that's the best dog name I've ever seen but that'd be a great you know if you're working all night and they're late shit and there's all the drunk, drunken hooligans yeah yeah else, you know you had a nice ferocious dog yeah <laughs> yeah he's a, I think he was a bull mastiff so a big lump yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. and what about the dog <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you what it's funny I've got, I've got to bring this up because this is one I don't understand now and I'll tell you for why being an HGV they they, they recently in some I don't know last 10 years or more they, they, they lowered it from 21 HGV to 18 Yes. And lots of companies now take them on as an apprentice at 18. and They, they can pass your HGV at 18. Okay. Right? Why not? And, and, and they take them on as an apprentice and they put them out with someone. Yeah. Like a mentor driver just yeah. to show them what you don't learn. And that. Yeah. 
And I don't understand why you got to be 21 to do the knowledge and be a black cab driver. Why can't you be 18? Why can't you have like start the knowledge at say 16, 17, 17 on a scooter or whatever, and be out on the road by 20 and 90. If you can go to war at 18, if you yep. can get married and have a drink, why can't you drive a cab? So what we're going to look at, what's, what's going to, logically, the only difference between that and an HGV driver would be the fact of money going through the window. So would, would it be a fraud? that You're more liable to commit fraud as an 18-year-old as you are as a 20-year-old? 21 year old But you can, you, you can give them a gun And send them to war You, oh, well, you give a gun anytime David. Yeah, They love a gun just, don't they? It's just like Do you know Doesn't what? make any sense It's hard enough To insure Someone under 25 I can imagine Trying to insure Someone for Higher reward At 18 Being impossible Yeah but that still Wouldn't fall into The criteria That the HGV driver If you If it's legal For you to drive HGV mm. Then the reason For us not being able To drive a cab doesn't make the reason sense. I say because you know they stay on school now till they're eighteen, don't they? It used to be fifteen or sixteen yeah. when we were young, but eighteen. So if someone eighteen finishes school and says like, you know, I'm going to do the knowledge, and they do the knowledge in two years, they're twenty and they can't do it. But they're twenty years old. What, what you know? So they're twenty and six months. What difference is six, six months going to make? I'll tell you what, it makes a huge difference in forgetting your knowledge. Yeah. Yeah, and then by the time you're driving, you've forgotten well, everything. But, but, but why can't he drive the cab? If, what, what difference Honestly, is another six months going to make? You do, know it's, you do know it's been reduced. It what? was more than that. It was, what was it? It was 21 and three months. Someone can oh, correct so me. Give, give, give it three months. Yeah, it was a weird thing. It was like, a, where did you get the three months from? It was 21 and something. It got reduced to 21. And also, the age that you can start the knowledge at wasn't 18. That got reduced to 18 from, I think, 20. Well, that's what they should do. At 18... Start the knowledge. If you finish it at twenty, you can become a black cab driver. Take it down to twenty. Give them two years on. The, give people two years. That Funny way, you might attract the youngsters from straight from school to start straight away. Actually, my son was, was asking me. He's going to be sixteen this year, and he was saying to me, "Dad, can I start the knowledge now?" If I wanted to, right? yeah. Um, and I said, "You could." And then it could take you five years, and then you'd be ready as soon as you were twenty-one. But until then, you can't drive a taxi. So yeah. it's you could start. Technically, you could study it. You could I don't study think it whenever would, you like. You it would make logical sense, if you want. though, because kids at 16 are live-wise, and if he starts at 18, he's probably going to finish it in two to two and a half years, yeah. no matter what. Yeah. So starting at 16 ain't going to gain him anything. He'll be on it no. longer. Yeah. What, what age is it that you can start the knowledge? 18. At 18, you can start it, but they won't give you a badge, even if you... No matter what you do, you ain't getting it to your so for, an, for one year, even if you've done your final, for there, a year, your knowledge is fading. There are people that have passed that couldn't get their badges. There are people. Mm. So they had to yeah, wait for the date. Well, I think they should they should take a year off that straight away, shouldn't they? Take it down to twenty, and no, say so you can start. You can, you can come to the knowledge at eighteen, and but but we're not going to give you a badge. Take two years, and they can men mentor them along. Isn't there another aspect? And this might go back to the HGV thing as well. Don't you need to have with have held a license for a minimum of a period? Uh, a car license. Yeah, that's it. That's it. But why? Well, I don't experience. know. You you Driving need to, experience. Well, so you you took a test at seventeen, and you're saying three years is not enough. So what? Three years. So three years and six months is not enough, but but four years is enough. What does that? What do they learn in that last six months? Then? But they don't is, not, that. is my license and your license different to the modern license? Because on my license at seventeen, I could drive a seven tonner. Yeah, seven, seven and a half. Seven and a half. Ton, yeah. So same. I think now it's still the same. No, nope. it's not. I, is it? I was just saying I was the same. Yeah, so was, the nice that yeah. you get Long now, after you, you can no longer drive multiple... The vehicle's range that you can drive now is reduced. Yes. You can drive a van, maybe. Yeah, I think van yeah. is the biggest... Probably single wheelbase on all now, I think. Yeah. So, right? yeah. Not even a double wheelbase. But we could drive seven and a half ton on the yeah. license that we got when we were 17. Yeah. So we could go to work on that. But, it, I mean, a, a cab is, is barely bigger than a car. No. The thing is with a taxi so is, and I, I, I say this all the time, is they're taking away the driving test of a taxi was a big mistake it's mm. it's really made such a difference to what you see out there mm. in the they way didn't take it away though paul didn't it collapse what what was the reason it nah, ended they've they i don't know it, but it, they've taken it away it's gone one way mm. whatever way you dress it up it's gone and it should never have gone you know <laughs> how will you bring it back i don't know but they should do yeah of course yeah. they should do they should they have to but because they should do it regular. They should do it regular as well. Standards of driving, yeah, yeah. From taxi they should, they, they should do that regular. They should, mm -hmm. Along with your medical, you could take an another driving test. Yeah, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, that could also incorporate the um, general laws that we need to, as an industry, come together and say, look, this is the rules of us in mm. terms of when you let someone out, who's in front, who's technically fair it is. Could have a rough guide. It'll still get some arguments no matter what, but that should all be part of the test, the driving test as teaching people. This is who we are. This is what we do. Because at yeah. the moment we we are getting further towards bandit country. Some of the some of the things you see from the newer badge drivers when you're out there. The I get upset when they say newer badge drivers, but maybe you're correct. And I ain't going to say it's I'm not true. I'm telling you now, it, they might be good at the knowledge, but some of them when they come out and they start driving. Well, know, who's telling them? It. Who's telling mm, them, Paul? I've seen it. When we did it before, we yeah. were all all associated with previous cab drivers, yeah. so we all kind of learnt the etiquette on the fly of a driver saying to you, "Don't do that." It's not so much Maybe the they're not getting that. It's not, so not much the etiquette. Drivers. it's not so much the etiquette, it's the standard of driving, i.e. setting the passenger down, refusing wheelchairs, you know, all that kind of stuff. When you take your, your driving test with a, in a proper taxi, you learn how to do it all properly. Set yeah, down on the yeah. left, set down on the right, do your U-turn, do your part, do, get your wheelchair Who's around power, wheelchairs? It happens a lot. See, maybe we do need to be a little bit more... I, I don't like this, the Twitter police, but <laughs> at the same time... If you are refusing wheelchairs and if you are refusing guide dogs uh, and you are refusing a lady standing on the side of the street at three o'clock in the morning with her children going mm -hmm. to Streatham because you don't want to go there, then we need to start reporting them a little bit. Yep. But then Agreed. You, you, you're going to lose your licence for knocking over a motorbike. You ain't going to lose it for um, refusing someone in a wheelchair. Mm. And that would be not good character, wouldn't it? Correct. So and um, there's a guy, oh, he's quite famous. I don't know who he is, but he's that famous. I don't know who he is, but he he's... He's blind. He's got a guide dog, and he he reports mainly private hire drivers for yeah, refusing he's in the them. dogs. Yeah, and he's been very successful. Yeah, um, this guy. And someone will put in the comments who he is. He'll have a YouTube famous. channel, won't he? He'd be quite rich now from his yeah, YouTube. Yeah, maybe. I know he hasn't got a YouTube, but he's. I think he's a journalist. Yeah, um, and he's been reporting. Const he's, so this is how much it happens. He's constantly reporting people, and yeah. some of them are back cab drivers. It's a small amount. But the larger amount is private hire because he uses Uber, right? Mm. Um, so if he's going to carry on using them, he's going to carry on having to do this reporting stuff because I suppose they refuse more than anyone else. Right. So right? that fit and proper character business, yeah. does it apply to private hire? Yeah. So if a private, if it, it would be very unfit and proper to refuse someone for a guide dog, mm -hmm. really would be bad. Yep. More so for me than knocking over the motorbike. I think so. So uh, that should be it. Yeah. That should be high up on the list of bad character for sure. So you say, I go back to HGVs. I know I always go back to HGVs. Yeah, you love an HGV. You're an HGV driver. He was. Well, well, I, think. I once knew someone. We never who guessed was. it though. No. You know what it was? They, they brought out, and I don't know, it's 10, 15 years ago. They brought it out every, I think it's five years, because I haven't drove HGVs for a while. Every five years, you, you have to do a um, 35 hours of training. You can do them in seven hours. So basically, that's a week's five days worth. And all certain different subjects. You better pick your own subjects. I don't know if you still can. But that, that could be done. In black cabs, I mean, a lot of people won't like having to do it. But if you if you said before you could get out, you have to do so many hours of, you pay a couple hundred quid and go and do the training. Well, and in that training could be all those things you're saying. It kind yeah. of was. We don't do, this is before yeah, your time. Yeah, but this, you're only talking about right, a couple of hours. Listen, I'm talking about doing. No, no, no. It used to be a, f a five day thing. Did it? Yeah, you went out with. You'd be out with a couple of other drivers. That maybe three of you could go out in the same cab. The instructor would be with you. You'd be spending the day. You spend it over five days, and then you go for your test on the fifth day. Uh, the test was. Um, is this for the cab? Yeah. yeah, it wasn't super difficult test, <coughs> but yeah, it, it, did, it did make sure you could drive. There was a dry steering test, so you had to do a three point turn. Not three. You know, it's not three point technically, is it? It's as many as you like, as long as, as long as you didn't dry steer. Was that before power steering? It, yeah, as well. You had you had um, gravel. They put up two planks, and the planks were just balancing like that, but were the width of what you had to get around in. And you'd turn, and if you dry steered, you push the gravel. So you mustn't push the gravel. You had to drive so that the gravel didn't get pushed into a heap. Um, and then turn yourself around. And then you had to reverse into a, a parking space that was flags, that was just the cab, if I remember rightly, was six foot. And the, the gap would be six foot six. So you had three inches either side to go to reverse into a space. Um, and then they would take you out on a road run, the examiner. You'd go around and the examiner would always, he used to catch you out a little bit on the last leg of it coming back towards Southgate Road, which is where I think it was in Southgate Road. My memory might have slipped now. It was on the corner of Southgate Road. The last leg of it, he'd say, go back into the depot, was a no right turn. So you there had to think about getting into the, the yard again on the fact he said, go back. And he knows you're coming along. Uh, to turn right and you should have learned road. that on your knowledge that it was no you right did. turn there was, right. I think the right turn's changed again now it was before Essex Road was Dove 
Mm-hmm. So you could turn into Dove, which I think you can't, you can't use anymore. But you turn it into Dove, you do a left, and you got into Yard. Yeah, there's a couple of things on that. One, you, you only did that one off. You never repeated it. HGVs repeat every five yeah, years. Yeah, no, so one off. Any Hang new, on. any so new get, laws come in? So HGVs have to test every five years. Yeah, they do thirty-five hours of training in the classrooms or on push bike classes like that, doing that. So they have to do that. They can do so seven hours um, one day per year for five years, or do it in one week block. Before they, otherwise the HGV gets invalid. Wow. And you can't drive the truck unless you keep up with training. And what I'm saying about repeating it, which you I don't sound like you did no, repeat no, never, it, never. is when they bring out, say for instance, TFL was to bring out new laws, regulations, change of practices, that would be in the training. Mm-hmm. So they could do it. But you could probably do that online. I know that. You know, like, like an online class where they could go in and you'd have to go and answer some questions and whatever. So the you've... Yeah. Basically, yeah. basically, you've seen it. Then we might understand what this CPD they call it, isn't it? continuous professional development. I, I just summarise that by saying, bring back the drive standard was so much better when we yeah. we had the we, drive. we are going to if we don't do something soon, mm. which the orgs maybe need to be involved in, we're going to turn into a bunch of bandits. Yep. So it will become saw, cutthroat out there. I saw it when I went to Manchester. It was bandit country in taxes. Yeah, yeah. They, they, honestly, it was just well, they did whatever they wanted. They made up. It, uh, as, they, as they go, and I'm sorry that if any <coughs> Manchester drivers are watching this, but their cab trade is oh, we've got massive something Manchester that audience. we do not want to see here. Yeah. We just do not want to see here. We are really com- like you know a lot of people complain about their industry, but in comparison to other cities around the world, we are by far the best. Like it, there's no, e- there's not even a discussion about. Yeah. It. We, but we want to stay that way, and to stay that way, we should have kept the driving test. That's the one thing that we should have kept. Well, yeah. You know, they all lost their jobs as well. All the driving instructors. <laughs> yeah, of course they it. did. They all just lost their well, jobs. They, well, they had to go back to no, being normal driving instructors, yeah. didn't they? You know, um, well, and I think I remember paying about 400 quid for that little set of lessons. Oh. Yeah. I think you got away cheap. Did I, th- I? I think it was about 700. Right. I'm yeah, not sure about 400. Now. I, did back about three, I did about three sessions yeah. plus the test. I passed first time, which was great because I didn't pass my actual driving test first time. <laughs> 